The bank doesn't want independent, libertarian, self-reliant people out there who don't need government. They want to own everything and they want you to be serfdom to them. Again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira, part of the outreach team of Silver Bullion here in Singapore, where we want to help you truly secure your wealth. This is part two of our interview with Francis Hunt, the market sniper. In part one, we took a look at the technical analysis of gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. And in part two, we're going to look at the reasons why we're seeing this volatility and movements in the metals. Francis, why, why are we seeing this volatility in metals at this point in time? So I would think there's a couple of things why. As I pointed out, technically, you've got... Uh the change in rating you've run, a, you've run on palladium non-stop getting more and more valuable at the expense of platinum and now you had that ledge and the breakout to the other side there are pivots we also had a pivot in the bond markets the the, the underspoken thing around metals is the turbo juice of collapsing bond markets and bond markets turned You've got to remember, and I keep reminding people, these two events are tied at the hip. You had the super high 128 gold-silver ratio spike at the same period that you had the absolute super valuation of debt and the, the dump of rates to barely 0.3 on a U.S. 10-year. Those things were all synchronized around March 2020. At that point, debt was super highly valued and paid a ridiculously low premium. And gold and silver on the gold silver ratio was super, super undervalued, particularly silver, which hit 128 ounces, but you mine it at eight ounces to gold uh, on most comparables. And they've been valued historically at 15. So you've got values that are well below 20 and you're seeing 128 in extremity. So since we've turned, there's this reluctance to allow this new order that is asserting. It's like truth. It's like truth suddenly making it out. The lie has got out and run around the world. Think around March 2020 events, if you like, because this all has March 2020. The initial lie won the day in the early outcome, and slowly more and more truth is leaking out. In the same way, the gold and silver markets are experiencing the reluctance of that truth of getting out that everything else is currency, it's digitized garbage, it can be gone in a day, there's way too much debt. The US is 600 plus, 700 plus percent many years ago, according to Chicago um, professors, they've got huge liabilities in welfare and Medicaid and commitments to pension, et cetera, that they absolutely can't make, which also dovetails with the event of March 2020 and what that was hoping to achieve. All those things occurring. And as a result, the last thing they want is the gold and silver truth asserting, because it's like truth on many things asserting. And eventually, when you're running a perversion, inversion, Ponzi scheme, such as we have now, you run into the dying death phase. And that is a collapse. There is an orchestrated collapse coming and more and more people. And the problem is people that know that, recognize that, start shifting out the room. You know, they don't want anyone to see they're leaving the party. No, 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 I'm still here. I'm partying, yeah, having a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they know the bomb's going to go off. They're all shifting to the room because they know if they suddenly just throw the glass into the ground and dash for the door, everybody's going to run after them and follow them because they're all acting it out. Everyone's playing the surface game. It's like that beautiful Japanese phrase where there is the official story and then there's the truth. Everybody understands that. They all talk the official story during work hours. Prof. Werner gave us the name for it. I can't recall it. And then after hours drinking, everybody talks the other story. So there's two truths. And, and the problem is everybody is starting to move towards the door. And that means they don't want to buy anything more. Chinese, there's still national interests, even though I feel that this is a globally coordinated thing. There's still national interests. China doesn't want to hold on to treasuries. They'd rather move it into gold. They'll be better off. They'll be richer. They'll be better managed. They'll have more runway to do things. Um, other nations, the Middle East, they don't want to be holding treasuries. You had the Saudis that were pushed into it. You had the Japanese that were pushed into it, all under the petrodollar, under Kissinger. He also died recently. I feel there are a lot of moments and a lot of shoes that dropped between March 2020, various events that have gone down, and this turning of the king of the petrodollar that arranged it with the Saudis. And, the, and the, how that went is 
nice little oil fields you got here. Wouldn't it be a shame if someone attacked and overthrew you to try to steal your resources? Because at the end of the day, everybody, all barbarism was always about stealing resources, slaves, women, whatever, the fields riches trees farms you name it it's always was resource-based theft we'll be your protection guy and here's what you're going to do you're going to use our currency and when you earn those monies you're going to buy as your assets our t-bills and then we'll make sure nothing nasty happens to you and you can rest assured we'll be the biggest defense we spend 10 times more than everybody else and we'll build lots of debt by spending more than we do for you to buy so you support the ponzi scheme now what's happening is you've got the saudis flirting with the bricks you've got everybody shifting with the partner they were giving up their dance partner that is why you're getting volatility because actually they're trying to contain something that wants to run away they're trying to keep it. And just like I spoke about containment in the gold-silver ratio in that, this entire system is based on a game of containment. It's based on a game of containment that people keep dancing to the old rotten tune and don't pretend that there's a new, uh, new vibe in town. And that's where we're at. And that's why you're getting the volatility, because the truth wants to break out. But it's going to follow the standard techno roots. And I still think they will manage to bring that gold down into the 1900s, uh, but that you will then get your subsequent raids. And we will go through all five stages because they're going to do all they can to resist. But the more you get resisted, the more, as I highlight, the greater the end gift. I know people who've been waiting for ages. Uh, for them, that's like, oh, so wait another few weeks and, you know, supposedly the gift will be bigger at the end. That sounds like a good sales spiel. I'm not a cold salesman. I, I don't care if people buy or not. I'm just saying, I know what I'm doing and I'm explaining technically why I am doing it and that this is absolutely normal uh, and people should stay the course and understand that there is a rug pull coming and having physical gold and silver will be one of the best things you have in that environment and digitization, bank money and bond money and so many other things will not hold you in good stead. If you're enjoying this interview with Francis Hunt and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you have questions about precious metals or perhaps storing with us here in Singapore, please send me an email at patrick at silverbullion.com. Yeah, amen to all of that. I mean, I guess a little bit of that, that rug pulling might be some rug tugging next year where the, a lot of people are expecting the Fed to start reversing and bringing down these interest rates. And, um, you know, they're thinking that, this is going to be pretty good for gold all throughout 2024. I mean, should the Fed pull back rates, uh, we may see a softened dollar, perhaps making gold a little cheaper for other currencies and perk up their gold buying. So I've got something to tell you on rates, and this is what so few people mention and discuss. In the bond markets, in the norm, this is the extremity, the one extremity, the high value of the bond and the other extremity, but most of the time you're in the 95% zone inside of that, like the normal curve. You know, there's a sort of tails, tails to the left, tails to the right. Most of the time you're in there and what the central bank does determines the value of the debt. What tends to happen when you're in a position like this is markets have to still accept what the central bank is doing because when you take the British, for example, they had a failure in their debt uh, system. No one wanted a bid for it. Why? They never increased interest rates when the Americans did. Or they increased by less when the US did a 0.75 increase. They moved by less. Well, all that happens is global hedge fund managers and asset managers and everybody, it could even be BlackRock itself, but they go, sell pounds, sell your British bond holdings, put it in America. You get currency appreciation a higher yield, own dollars, go up more. What ends up happening? Nobody is in the bid side because you've got two guys in a race and one wants to be fat and slow. Well, all the money on the betting goes on the one that's slimmer and faster and is going to pay you more. So that what, that what ends up happening. So there was then an absence of bid in the British market. And it didn't matter what the Bank of England did. No one wants to buy your garbage. Nobody wanted to buy it relative to other because they could get better still garbage in my view but better quality garbage for the short term uh, elsewhere so the problem is they then either got forced to raise rates which they started to do to catch up 
with America. They quickly did that. That was a Bank of England failure, not the budget uh, as much, which was trying to be stimulatory and was giving tax cuts and entrepreneurial uh, options. And they said, oh, you couldn't afford all of this. It would have meant more bond debt. That was part of it. If you're going to issue more bond debt, obviously people say, wow, I'm not going to be the unique owner of all of this stuff. There's more coming. But for all the British debt that's been issued, it wouldn't have made a huge difference. It was the fact that they were lagging in rates. So what ends up happening is the market tells you, so you mentioned the Fed cutting rates. Why does Powell keep saying higher for longer? Not because he thinks the economy is strong, but because of this fulcrum factor where there's essentially you're on an axis here. And that is valuation. My hand is valuation and my elbow is rates. If debt needs devaluing, that means the elbow goes down. The hand on rates goes up. So if the hand represents, sorry, I don't know if I swapped it around there, but if the hand represents rates and the rates go up, that's the only way you devalue the debt. So you're sitting with so much new debt that the treasury, Yellen, has to issue just to meet existing expenditure at a time that everybody is making less money, paying less tax, and you're getting less income. So at the same time, there's more welfare claimants, there's more unemployment claimants, there's more everything. So at the this is why being the the last the bank of last resort, being the, the Treasury or the, the Fed, is the worst position. You are the buffer for when it goes bad with everybody else. And at the, that very moment your income goes down, you have to spend to make for those shortfalls in tax in receipts and other people's economic activity. This is how states becomes more and more part of the economy. And once you start the expansion of states as part of a player in the market, it eventually becomes the market. This is communism. You eventually trend to communism, which is the system I believe they wish to bring in anyway. So it's a sort of Bolshevik technological oligarch through corporate fascism, such as Apple, Google, and all of these guys that they want to bring that system in. And how do they do it? They have to make state eventually the largest part player in the economy to the point that everyone else is eliminated. How do you do that? Well, you take their money away or you make them poor, you make them unemployed, you crush the Gini curve and you have a billionaire class that is all bought into the communist uh, elite game and then surf them. You don't want upper middle class people. You don't want middle class people. You don't want strong fairly reasonably income working class people. You want them all gutted and uh, ward of state. You need them on welfare because then that you tell them exactly what to do. And uh, if you need them to take a medical treatment, that's part of them getting their CBDC uh, allocation of you, you, you know, what do they call it? You unemployment benefit or life fee. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, universal that. basic income. Universal UBI. That was the thing that was escaping me. We haven't used that phrase in a while. So with that all going on, so when you say the Fed wants to cut rates, what you're actually saying to me is debt needs to climb in value. Well, I, I at a point where debt is going to absolutely explode in proliferation and issuance, how is it going to climb in value? Because that means no one else is buying the Fed is going to have to become the largest and biggest and absolutely self monetize at an unbelievably rapid rate to try push out compete itself because there's going to be no one else competing for it to a ridiculous level to get those low rates. In short, I say exactly the opposite and people are not prepared for this. The best way to crush the masses, particularly in a country like America, where most people don't know what they paid for their car. They only know what their payment is. They only know what they, 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 if they get an increase. They realize it's extra payments they can spend on their income. They've got everything on payments and they increase it. So everybody is ursary extracted in America. And I say everybody, I'm not projecting that the Americans are incompetent, but generally there's a large part of that uh, populace. And there's a few people that really understand this and like to be out of debt and have banks out of their loan, but as a percentage is not a lot. So you spike interest rates, you get to do two things that are incredibly beneficial. And you get to be Powell saying, hey, I warned you interest rates could go higher. He's establishing alibi right now for the fact that the debt market's valuations have to collapse, which is associated with the other side of the seesaw going up. Interest rates going higher. 
in an uncontrolled spike because if he doesn't raise interest rates the markets will bid for that debt so much lower that the implied interest rate is higher he will have to move to meet the market in other words there's two forces there's what the market will accept as interest rates on my left hand and then there's the fed and they walk together generally in the normal 95 percent if you go super proliferation you start to have this active tension of pulling away. The market says, no, bud, I ain't buying this stuff. Rates needs to be much higher. And the Fed can walk away from it a while, but they have to come to the market because the people who buy the debt ain't going to pay what they want. They'd rather buy gold. They'll have the same amount of gold. Who cares for it, uh, you know, a 5% yield if you're going to lose 30% in capital value? And you've got a decade of doing that. Nobody. No one's going to buy that product. Try sell that product. You have to increase the yield chronically so that the compounding effect actually makes it a worthwhile investment. At the same time, you're throwing ever more of it into the, the workspace that people have to buy. So you have an absolute glut. What happened with oil when there was a glut? Oil and a glut. You couldn't even buy it for zero dollars because it had a storage associated cost. You had a negative 40 in the active markets. That's called a glut. Well, can I tell you, you currently have a glut of debt and the future looks like that. So how do rates go down if rates going down mean valuation going up? It just can't happen. So the only way to understand this is you're actually going to get, and that's why he keeps warning because he doesn't want the blowback that's going to come when you have the interest rate spike. He can at least say, hey, I told you so. Because people don't understand the mechanisms of the, the bond market. It is inverted in terms of its valuation and, and rates. And we have turned. The bond market goddamn turned. It's over. It doesn't come down much. It might have a, you know, every market doesn't go up in a straight line. You might have a pullback. You're seeing in the markets, there's a little bit of a bid and it's come down from 5%. We called those 5%. People laughed at us at 3.3% when we're saying you're going to 5. Never, everything would have collapsed by then. I said, you're going to 5. And then after that, I expect you're going to go higher, but you will have a pullback. We're having the pullback. We're mid fours. And guess what? You will go again. Why? Devaluation. Because they just need to issue a trillion of new debt. One trillion. This is like QE. Only no one's getting that money. That's just so that they can maintain their government programs, the UI, all their standard things. So in an unadditional QE, no one's getting um, you know special business pay for some March 2020 uh, illness event that they can't run to work or go do their jobs. Just to maintain what you already have. This is like when you're on heroin and you need three fixes in a day just to not feel suicidal. Now you want to feel good. It just gets worse. So that's where we are in debt. And this is my, you know, my big rant that I have to say. There are no major significant cuts coming. You can get trimming. You may even get one or two uh, and a collapse. But then you're going to go straight to QE. And how does that money come into fruition? Debt issuance. Who's going to buy it? Who's going to buy it? Who wants to own the asset that is free money to next to wrecked people that don't have jobs and are on welfare? How will you ever collect against that asset? It's going to get written off. It's going to get written off. It's going to go to zero. Would you rather own the other side of that money that's being used the way the government is using it on QE? Or would you rather own a bar of gold? Guess what? That's your volatility. That's where things stand. Forget significant, meaningful rate cuts. The cycle has turned. And can I also say this important point? What takes 40 years to inflate of Bad, bad spending, bad non-economic spending, intentional built-in financial destruction, future loading of explosive, the nanothermite of the, of the structure of the American system. It's taken 40 years to load. When it starts to go, doesn't take 40, it doesn't take the 10 seconds of free fall to the ground. Um, it's, it's gone. You take that escalator up, loading that thing up and putting all that poison pills and explosives in your structure. When you push the plunger, it is not taking 40 years to unwind. It goes free fall into that footprint. And that's where you are. That truly is where you are. And what do you want to be holding at that point? Debt or gold?
And debt is every dollar because every dollar is borrowed into existence. Somewhere a bank gave a loan to somebody and they bought your product and they pass that money to you and it sits in a digital bank account with another bank. Change the brands, the slices, none of them matter. The whole system goes down. Doesn't matter, strong bank, weak bank, um, you know, major bank, small bank. They'll keep the majors up and let the small ones go and let the, the big ones buy the small ones for the cheap so that they get enriched earnings and lots of extra customers while the music's still playing. But in the end, that system fails. The dead donkey of the old system, the huge donkey that is loaded, we're putting the final straw on its back and it's collapsing. And then it's getting the bullet in the back of the head. And the new pony, which is the central bank digital currencies, Bitcoin, crypto, the digitized money is where they want you. They don't want you in gold. That's why you should get there, but expect them to react to you negatively for doing so. So you might have to have it black. They might try to get you to register it first, and then they'll try to ask how much and where you keep it and all sorts of things. So it's going to be a struggle to keep your wealth because it's not their goal. The bank doesn't want independent, libertarian, self-reliant people out there who don't need government. They want to own everything and they want you to be serfdom to them. That is the goal of communism. And that's where they're taking you. Amen to just about everything you, you said there. Um, I remember saying years ago when the Fed was trying to get uh, a bit of inflation, I remember saying, if the Fed can't get <clears throat> the inflation that it wants to get, what makes anyone think that the Fed can control it once they actually do get it? And I guess we're, we're kind of seeing that. Very good point. And part, part of why they didn't get that inflation is we were getting a multitude of once-off mega benefits. And that was globalization, the lower cost of production, everything. So manufacturing, the workshop got pushed to the Southeast Asia uh, and everyone else went into services and mortgage broking and all of this stuff, helping people get hyper leveraged to buy more houses, cars and everything else as a, a key value service. And we went into a financial engineering phase, which hyper leveraged everything that saw ridiculous valuations for assets washing in and a buy the dip mentality that's been a 40 year meme on bonds that has now ended. And m most people don't realize that their normality that is their existence in the financial world is about to totally change tack. And all the crimes, they've actually had the most benevolent set of circumstances where there was such downward pr uh, force on the uh, production cost as more and more things found their way to the lowest cost and you had kids in india literally showing your nike footballs etc for nothing more than a sandwich and a couple of rupees uh, and that's why you got to buy and change clothes you created a disposable culture where nobody fixes anything anymore you just buy new you buy new you buy new it's just consumer throw away give it to you know the poor or use as a rag uh, and we stopped respecting um, assets and values and people's work and labor and everything was a replacement culture uh, and now and that's all on a financial uh, leverage ever getting more leverage using more credit to do all this till eventually we're all walking time bombs of of credit card debts that's sitting at one trillion and then you've got subprime cars at ridiculous amounts people driving much bigger huge trucks uh gas guzzlers whatever that non-economic whatever hey i love a good car and a good motor i have a big car with that too but the point is we can't afford it um and we we're paying often close to a hundred thousand dollars on it and we're buying 50% of it over seven years uh, on a on a interest rate. And it's a depreciating asset so much so that even when you paid for seven or nine years, the, the remaining 50% isn't going to be in the value of the car. It will have lost so much value because there'll be hundreds of thousands of other people all in the same situation when the music stops and nobody's going to want those big ass trucks uh, apart from their, you know, their knockdown value because no one's going to have the money and banks won't be lending anymore. You won't have that system the financial engineering will have stopped. Uh, and that's the big thing. And the financial engineering has been repressive against gold because it's shown, it said, don't spend today, get leverage, get debt. You know, you know, the likes of Robert Kiyosaki, there was good debt to have and you bought houses. Yes, during that period of financial engineering and asset inflation, borrowing was good, particularly if the income of the rental will cover your um, your your payments. But that whole model was based on the economic system that
that allowed and permitted that. When you contract expenditure and much less people can buy at the capital prices you paid and most people can't afford to rent and the interest rate spikes, well, the whole model goes uh, for a ball. And that's when you hit real trouble uh, in terms of everything. And that's why uh, I suggest uh, precious metals is absolutely one of your best holdings. Wait for the five stages to play out on gold and silver. Um, plat uh, platinum is a consideration, especially if you're in a country that doesn't charge you VAT if you purchase it. Um, but if you're in gold and silver, you're probably going to do just dandy. Having platinum is like having a third horse cut from the same mother. It's all good. Um, it's never bad, but it probably performed somewhere in the middle, maybe a little bit better in parts than gold. Uh, but I will say the industrial uses, if we have a global contraction, could fall away to a great degree on the demand side, uh, whilst uh, bullion is money um, and silver is used to be money as well. They have more history as being associated to money. So I'd still say, uh, you know, platinum's interesting, but keep your gold and silver. Don't just rotate. Uh, rather get a little bit on the side, maybe five or ten percent of your bullion holdings. Okay, la last question here, Francis. Um, you know, you you've made it pretty clear through through our talks in the past and and through your talks with, with other uh, other channels as well that um there is going to be a reset, and before that reset can take place, the old system must die. Francis, are are we seeing the death of the old system, and what more? financial engineering or are we going to see before we come into that new let's say cbdc system so for the when the old system it first of all it's it's already dying so it's like a taper it's getting tapered and it's coming down and we're not only we're not only going to see a new system after that they have already begun slowly ascending and inflating so one is tapering and the other one is coming up at the same time and that's clearly where crypto and all of this thing, Bitcoin was not Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto is never going to show up. This is all fairy tales for adults. This is the beginning of training and getting people used to the movement of money in a, in a crypto environment, uh, which will then be super, a simplified, dumbed down, a simplified, dumbed down version of which, because people still send money to the wrong wallet, will come out for the CBDCs, which will be super simple. And will be issued and you'll be sending it and they'll have all the control the data and everything they want and that's where we're heading so you already are seeing the tapering up of a new system coming up as the other one is going down because you can't just be binary and kill one system and have absolutely nothing and say okay let's start working now on the other they've already begun so they are working but the problem you have is the total crypto market, and that's not including what will come as CBDCs, which will be huge by market cap. They will issue unbelievable market caps from the get-go. But I think those will be mediums of exchange rather than assets. You know, it's it's kind of, the, you know, gold serves as many things. Actually, it serves mainly a store of value. And you try save your gold, and then you would use, in the old days, silver to purchase everyday transaction. So um, there's many different aspects to it. But they are going to have to increase so there's a real opportunity as they are tapering and killing the debt which will go in an interest rate cycle blow off i'm pretty convinced of that uh i have to say it's a forecasting the future i could of course be wrong um, but debt valuations have to go down that means rates have to go up um, so in that event of a, a rate super spike what in, in essence you're going to get is you're going to get a collapsing of the debt market but at the same rate that that is collapsing the opportunity is their alternative will be hyperinflating because you can't have a let's say we have a hundred trillion global currency effect there's banks there's everything with money moving around and it sums up to a hundred trillion and there might even be a couple of quadrillion in long-term value saved all in the name of you know the legacy families and blackrock and vanguard and all their vehicles you've got that that doesn't go away the new system has to have that level of capacity and a hypervaluation. So as you are collapsing one, the other has to grow. And the main areas that I feel, if you look at numbers of population and wealth per population, it's the Western and Commonwealth nations. So you're talking Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, Europe, and North America. That's Canada and America. That's where all the big middle classes, where you look at that graph, it's just got much more money per person, but much less people. So what you're going to have is those people are going to lose a lot of wealth 
and the rest of the world are going to gain a small amount. And you're going to have to contract that down and you're going to be reinflating the new system. So it's going to escalate. So there will be a bull market in uh, crypto, I would imagine, if it's to serve a role. And some of it will also be taken up in CBDCs because as that debt collapses, they have to have a new system. But the problem is you with a pension that owned the debt, you're not going to be given Bitcoin to the value of that. You'll just get a certain low amount that will be contractually agreed. They'll use the whole reset as, well, you're this old and you contributed that long. That means you get a million, you know, widget tokens. And then they'll keep printing widget tokens. It'll sound like a lot in the beginning, but you'll be tapered very quickly in an inflation. And if you don't spend it, you'll lose it and various other rules. And if you haven't had your shot, you won't get your next allocation and yada, yada. So it'll be a complete control mechanism. But nonetheless, the, 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 the ultimate wealth of the families who are transacting, they're not going to accept a very small world where everyone only has 100 pounds of worth. So they're going to, they will, they will no doubt, in, and they are already positioned in those asset classes that are going to do the hyperinflation. So they're just trans transitioning to, don't forget, everybody's transitioning, including your, your new world order types and all the legacy world economic forum types that are part and parcel of this managed game. So you've got to position where they position, and that's going to be status cryptos, I suspect, the ones that are not going to be controlled by government, the ones that are currently in existence that officially aren't controlled by government, but that will cooperate with government and hand over your material and say you got that much capital gains. Don't forget the tax extractor will be there if you get any of this hyperinflation uh, for not taking the dump, but it's better to pay a tax and get richer than to have all your wealth disappear. So you have to participate on both horses and you have to actually start moving your gear off the back of the soon to be dying donkey onto the new slowly getting bigger and inflating fresh Tonto, the white pony, that is the new fresh horse. You've got to take your stuff off the old iron horse train and arch it onto the new monorail train before the train collides into the end of the railway track and everything that is left there is crash and mess. So that's the process. So they are collapsing they will collapse the system but they are the benefit and the opportunity is what is the new system going to be and be early be early in the new system and don't leave your stuff in the old system which is why i say get cash out because cash will when they have the big reset which is the moment at which the one horse is officially dying and then the fresh one is taking over pulling the cart um you're going to have a lot of people that get devastated in that and banks cash in if you cash notes will do for a period of they can't just say from this day on they're invalid they'll have to give you a year or two so you should have cash notes at home and you should have uh crypto uh, and you should have gold and silver pre pre preferably undeclared um and when they come around asking questions about what you have ideally be in a country where you can say it's none of your business Alrighty, Francis Hunt, before we head out, can you tell us how people can follow you on social media and about marketsniper.com and the services you provide there? 100%. Thank you for the opportunity, Patrick. We are totally focused on this transitional event. There is a transition. It's not my gender. It is what's going to be going down in this process. And our sole goal is A, building wealth during this period, because believe it or not, they're going to be amazing opportunities. However, for the multitude, the passive, uh, unfocused multitude, this is going to be a wealth destroying event. However, as I've highlighted, there will be really key opportunities that can actually be fulcrum wealth creating events. And re it's not only making that wealth, but retaining it. It's not what you make, it's what you keep in structures, systems, uh, cross border situations where you can truly, truly hold on to everything and how you position for that is our core focus. Individual traditional IFAs that are trading in the indi individual, put your money in a pension, are going to be giving you the wrong advice for the times we are coming. That was the traditional advice for the system that is dying, and it may have served reasonably well during that period. This is a true, true seminal pivoting event. And our focus is on building wealth and retaining it during reset time. And we not only uh, invest, but we will occasionally take a uh, leverage position. I had a great week on Bitcoin and Ethereum, by the way. Um, it was absolutely superb. The gold trigger 
was a trigger also for the fiats. Note how the digitized money, and I dropped this point in earlier, held on to those gains where gold and silver were pushed back. That's still not a reason not to have the gold and silver, but it just points out they will be uh, contained for as long as possible. So if you value that, and that is you, pop over to our YouTube for free views on the Market Sniper or the Crypto Sniper, they're both channels, or follow on the, the Twitter stream. Um, and more importantly, book a call at themarketsniper.com if you want to come on board, learning a method of how we will invest for this process and this period. Thanks for having me on, Patrick. Truly appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate you all coming back on. It's always uh, extremely colorful whenever we can get you back on. So I want to thank you for your time, uh, your clear insight and vision, and I hope we can do this again soon. Awesome. Thank you. That was the market sniper, Francis Hunt, sharing his views on the economy and the future of money. To hear more of Francis' views, follow him on Twitter at the market sniper, and please see the services he provides at www.themarketsniper.com. If you like this video, please do subscribe, share, and give us a thumbs up. All are greatly appreciated. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.